All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and what a wonderful day it is on Magic Arena, because we've got Historic Brawl. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yep. Ah, oh, Friday Night Magic at Home, Historic Brawl events. It's free to enter, and you get yourself uh, 40 gems, basically, <laughs> for, uh, for doing this. Maybe if you've got no collection, you might get some rares, but... Apparently, wizards are addicted to giving me 40 gems. So, we'll see what it is. Uh, and after this is over as well, there is a festival event, which I think is like 2,500 gold to enter, which is another week's worth of historic brawl. So, we've got some... Oh, a lot of brawling to do. Let's just say that. Today's deck is going to be built around the Swole Lizard himself, niv Mizit Peru. 6 mana 5-5 five, five with flying, the spell cannot be countered, and whenever you draw a card, niv Mizit Pay Rune deals 1 damage to any target. And whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So I'm still on that, that is it, uh, fix. Uh, I'm still, I'm still going for it. <laughs> the Jeskai in uh, niv Mizit is it, uh, itch. So yeah, we're going to be playing this one. I think we've played this once in, on the channel in the past, and it did pretty well. Uh, it's essentially a uh, blue-red control list, and its finisher is the commander itself. So we're going to be dealing damage, keeping niv around whenever your opponent's casting is an instants and sorceries. We're drawing cards and generating insane amount of card advantage, and hopefully going to win the game that way. Uh, we do have alternative win cons in Chandra Awakened Inferno and Chandra. Uh, a couple of little pe beat down tools, I guess, with Bone Crusher Giant and Brazen Borrower. These are the, our only two creatures, and they just so happen to be instants and sorceries as well. So, uh, you know, we're actually running from for the instant side with the little bit of upside of them being creatures that can do some stuff. That being said, without any creatures, that means we do have to take a control route of uh, controlling the board and making sure whatever resolves is what we want to resolve. So plenty of counter spells in this list. We've got Soit Coming, Disdainful Stroke, Essence Scatter, Dwari's Disruption, Memory Lapse from the Mystical Archives. This card has been absurd for me. Uh, it basically uh, uh, time walks your opponent a lot of the time. They end up like skipping lands and drawing bad cards and yeah it's, it's pretty good uh counter spell is legal in historic brawl as well so we're going to be adding that one uh tails end hard counter for any of your opponent's commanders as well as you know general uh legendaries and even triggered abilities as well so uh if our opponent plays an ulamog the ceaseless hunger we can either uh bounce or counter the ulamog and then counter the trigger with the tails end that kind of thing uh, should note as well, uh, niv Mizit being our win con, he's also part of a combo in this list as well with Curiosity. A 1 mana enchantment aura, you enchant a creature and when the enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent you may draw a card. When you draw a card it deals damage to an opponent with niv Mizit, and dealing damage with niv Mizit draws you a card. So this is actually an infinite loop of damage and card draw, so as long as we've got um, a deck size equal to the size of our opponent's Life total, niv Mizit, Pay Rune, and Curiosity is all we really need to close out the game. Otherwise, we will have to resort to Awaken Inferno and Chandra, tick up damage ticks and things like that. Um, got Cold Steel Heart and Arcane Signet, which allow us to ramp into niv Mizit a little bit early, but they also allow for like turn three Chandra, which is quite brutal. Uh, there's a Teferi's Ageless Insight in here as well. Uh, I think this one's probably going to be the spicy meme of the list. Four mana, we're going to have to tap out for it most of the time. But if you would draw a card except for the first one you draw each time, uh, then you draw two cards instead. Uh, you draw step excluded on that one. So when niv Mizit triggers, we draw two cards and deal two, for example. Uh, Prismari Command has a draw two, discard two. It becomes a draw four, discard two. Uh, Electrolyze as well. My first time using this card in any format, actually. Uh, mostly because Prismari Command ends up being better, but with a singleton format, Electrolyze ends up taking the field. Uh, two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets, and then you draw a card, which would be a draw two. And uh, yeah, I feel like that will just about do it as far as uh, explaining the deck. I guess we've got a little bit of ramp with Magma Opus and Creative Outburst from Strixhaven. That's probably worth noting. Uh, these cards are pretty absurd if we can get them to be cast in the late game. Otherwise, they are discarding treasures to help us get to that early niv Mizzet again, as we've mentioned. And uh, yeah, if you do enjoy the content, let me know down below, as well as hitting that like button and subscribing. All of that helps me know that you enjoy Historic Brawl and you want to see more of it, because we've got an event going up, so 
depending on the reception of this video, depends on, uh, I guess, how much Historic Brawl we play over the next week. So, yeah, let me know by uh, voting with that like button, with the comment section, with uh, the subscription button, all of that jazz. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty, opponent goes first. Uh, we have Lava Coil as early game removal. Electrolyze as well later. Disdainful Stroke's not actually a playable card, though, in this matchup. So, I don't know if we keep it. I think we might be okay. The Seagate Restoration could also just be a land as well. Tails End, now that's a card. Uh, I will... I want my removal, so I'll bottom that. The likelihood is they're going to play something here. And then next turn I'm going to want to hold up and Tails End for the Heliod. Because they'll want to play it on curve every time. And I'll want to stop them. Question is, what do we do now? It's like we could bolt ourselves to electrolyze the Daxos. The sound is doubled up right now, isn't it? What a, what a wonderfully, beautifully made game from uh, Wizards of the Coast here. Yeah, I think I need to hold up in Memory Lapse and Disdainful Stroke. Rather than dealing with you, because there you go. I might not get another opportunity to get rid of an Elspeth. And just take two. Uh, with this, we will go on blue. Play Snow Covered Island, Cold Steel Heart on red. So we have Niv Mizzet Mana. Uh, we're going to hold up and memory lapse again just to take two here because if they draw a land, they're going to go for Heliod. Luminous Broodmoth? Do I even care? Probably not. Let's play the Mountain. Coil the Broodmoth. Good game. When plays land, we will lapse their Heliod. <laughs> yeah, the music's actually doubled up. Uh, lifelink counter on Daxos, sure. If they don't play anything relevant here, I am going to electrolyze the Daxos and make that pretty pointless. Idyllic Tutor. Alright. Two damage here. God, this music's pure chaos. What will Idyllic Tutor grab? Oh yeah, what a banger. Uh, yeah. It's quite epic, actually. <laughs> ECD for my Niv-Mizzet. Okay, well, they can hold that forever. I think I'm just gonna... Tap land, pass. We'll not be playing Niv Mizzet into an ECD without having an appropriate answer to it. It lapsed. To be honest, maybe I shouldn't actually lapse the Heliod. Uh, I should probably. Yeah, I should probably hold up and the lapse for the ECD instead. Yeah, because now I can't play Niv Mizzet and Heliod could come down and do nothing. That's totally fine. That was a mistake on my part. Alright. 
And now they just get to put Heliod in hand, so yeah. Huge mistake on my part. Totally cool. The music stopped now. I guess they thought to themselves, well, we've played twice as much music. What more do they want? Let's grab a mountain. Need some card advantage here. Something useful would be nice. Four cards, this is four other cards, so they need a card in the yard before they can play Elspeth again. Cycles, Sweltering Suns, I need to find a counter magic. Well, we Midnight Clock, I guess. It's, uh, it's an ECD target, but if that's what they want to do with their ECD, then I'm totally fine with that. Yep, cool. That will work for me. So they can do Daxos, Elspeth, or this mare thing. I'm just going to keep drawing lands because they're my favorite and they allow me to play the game. They could be throwing it down because they have a Banishing Light. It's entirely possible. If they do, I'm probably going to swap out some of these cards targeting my own niv -Mizzet. My spells are expensive. Yep, there it is. There's a Banishing Light. So I'm just going to Frostbite my own niv -Mizzet. Just to redraw. Ooh, curiosity. Alright, ping you. So once the ECD wears off, I can play Niv Mizzet into Curiosity, and then they need a enchantment based removal spell, basically. Otherwise, they're in big trouble. Linden, don't care. Heliod is, uh, is a card I care a little bit more about, I suppose. Chandra, Torch of Defiance. So Chandra minus is on Linden, ECD brings back Linden. I think I want to have Niv Mizzet come down at the same time as Curiosity, so I'm just gonna like actually tempo them a little bit here, killing the Linden, or attempting it at least. Let's do this. Letting them reanimate it with ECD. But it's far less damage and kind of forces them to, well, and not necessarily forces them to pick Linden, but they probably want to anyway. So they're going to lose their ECD devotion anyway. And I have the Soul Seer as well, so I can use that to kill Heliod. So it looks like Chandra gets to live here. Shadow Spear. Uh-huh. Oh, the double music's back again. <laughs> Good lord. Alright. Five damage to it. Loses indestructible. This has to be a god's willing in order for this to stop. Or a plus one plus one, I suppose. You could have a fighter's one. Don't have any of that. Good. So, I play niv -Mizzet, I play Curiosity, then I just need a single instant or sorcery to resolve, or to go on the stack, actually, and then I win. So hopefully, between Chandra... Oh, there we go, that's a good one. Yeah, in fact, that's the win right now. So, we play niv -Mizzet. Got 35 cards are at 26. Say Curiosity on Niv Mizzet. 
They'll need, like, Teferi's protection here. Uh, good game. One damage to any target. Whenever we deal damage to a target, we draw a card. Whenever we draw a tar card, we deal one damage to any target. And that's the loop. Cool. Opponent doesn't want us to play it out. They actually... Uh, I don't know how Arena likes this uh, this combo. Um, I've played it before. I don't think I had too much trouble, but between clicking constantly and having zero timeouts by the looks of it, uh, yeah, I might have gotten timed out and then it would have just gone, hey, no, you don't want to draw. Why would you want to do that? Or something like that. That's just Arena, you know? It does everything wrong. And, uh, yeah, so very rarely gets it right. <laughs> Oh dear. Either way though, nice victory and on to the next game. Alrighty then, we're in on the play with turn one up, turn two a braid or bone crusher giant. I think that's a really nice combination of cards, honestly. So we're going to take this god tier hand and see what we can do with it. Uh, we are up against Exus, a brand new Strixhaven commander. Exus Orik Overlord. Four mana in black and white for a 2 4 double strike with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, boo hiss. Um, I think I'll opt. I'll look for a land drop, honestly. Brazen Borrower. No, we want to just dig for a land here, I think. Shark Typhoon, fair enough. Help yourself while we talk about your commander. Uh, return a non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. And then you can also use Awaken the Blood Avatar, which is a 8-mana Rakdos card, making this a Mardu commander. Um, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures, and then this spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrifice. So it's kind of like an Aristocat style of thing. Take Shark Typhoon, interestingly. Uh, we did draw the land we were looking for. Fantastic. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature. You get a 3-6 black and red avatar creature token with haste. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals 3 damage to each opponent. Right, we're going to play our land. We're going to pass the turn. We want to keep this unknown information because we get a little bit of uh, value, you know, by not giving away exactly what we're doing here. If our opponent thinks that we have something that we don't, then it's benefiting us. So the question becomes, what side does this pathway want to fall on? Uh, we will allow this. Faithless Looting. A card I could include in my list. Kind of felt that we had enough card advantage, though. And this one's kind of, you know, suitable more for graveyard-based decks, which our list really isn't. So, yeah, that's why Faithless Looting didn't make the cut. Also notably as well, Brainstorm isn't here. Uh, Brainstorm's only really better than cards like Opt when you can shuffle the two cards from the top of your library uh, away if you have dead cards, for example. We only have two fetch lands, so it's not really, again, realistic for that deck, so we've got Opt instead. Opponent thinking really hard on this discard here. Not sure what they're thinking. I know they're there because they're hovering. There's a Carry Zev's Expertise and a Witch's Oven. So the good thing about what our opponent's playing is it looks like it's all about stealing my creatures, and I don't have creatures to steal. All right, that Drawn Counter Spell means that the pathway will undoubtedly come down on blue. Though I may not use it. Uh, if anything dies to any of my removal, then it's just better to do it that way. Selfless Savior, yep. Field of the Dead. Now that is going to be a problematic card eventually. So I can't really Bone Crusher a, se a Selfless Savior. I'm not sure I really would want to either. Okay, Creative Outbursts. It's technically like a land drop, but not really. So if I was to stomp the Selfless Savior, my opponent can sack it in response and fizzle the card altogether, and then I don't get my three mana creature. Or they can sack it with Witch's Oven. Many different options. Uh, we are going to kill that. Well, we're actually... 
think we're killing it. Or countering it. Uh, well, we don't want them to cast this Awaken the Blood Avatar, so I guess what I'm going to do... ...is just to braid the Selfless Saviour. We'll catch the Mayhem Devil later with uh, Slaying Fire or something like that. Kind of sucks that we can't discard for the treasure here. I mean, technically we can, but we'd have to be using our treasure anyway. Alright. So they sack Prior. Get a Midnight Clock. So no land again. It's a big stinger, unfortunately. I think I just slaying fire this now. It lets my opponent resolve whatever they want. But it saves me a lot of life, I think. And It's not as though we don't have the answer to uh, quite a lot of the things that our opponent could follow up with here. Young PZ gets Bone Crusher Gianted, so... That's nice. Land would be really good here. Fantastic. Uh, why would you do that? Answer me this. Alright. I think it's probably best that we do Fizzle Bone Crusher Giant to get rid of Young Pyromancer, honestly. I don't really want that card around generating 1-1s one -one so that I can't answer. And, I mean, if they spend the time just hard casting Awaken the Blood Avatar with no cost reduction, then we're in a fantastic spot as well. Uh, we're gonna go with the Auric here. Alright. Sweltering Suns. So being a 2-4, I kind of want to answer it in a way that, again, this game, really insistent on tapping me out of my red so I can't actually cast the spells I want to cast. Silver Falls, fantastic. Alright, so we've made a land drop. We can discard Creative Outburst. We've got red, red. Yeah, that's something we're going to have to do here, I think. Creative Outburst will be our third red source. So this allows them to get like Mayhem Devils and Young Pyromancers around. Selfless Saviour, shot. It's pretty solid stuff. I feel like if we can get a Niv Mizzet to stick though, then we're in a really good spot because we've got blue, 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 red, red, red. So if we draw a land, I think we can hold up and counter spell for Niv Mizzet. And if they're going with the Exus side, that's probably a really good indication that. We're going to get at least a couple of triggers from uh, from this. Let's read a Clarion Spirit. Plays a land. And Field of the Dead is now online, unfortunately. We'll take four. We can also just not be in a rush as well to get Niv Mizzet down if we don't draw the protection spell here. We did get an island. Alright, so this should allow me to hold up and blue blue, and it does. Fantastic. So Niv Mizzet comes down. Counter spell is held open. And we basically just want to protect from anything that would take my Niv Mizzet off the board. Like in a Crowan War, for example, I think that's probably a pretty good use of uh, this counter spell. Don't really want my opponent using my cards against me. 
Uh, let's hit our opponent's face. I don't really foresee us getting that far with Niv Mizzet's damage pings here. I won't be blocking Extus because then they could just have a, a shock or anything like that. I kind of feel like they might have a murderous rider or, in this case, a spark harvest. There you go. Pretty dope. No, we draw garbage again. <laughs> it's literally we need mountains and we're drawing islands. You can't make this up. This is uh, this is quite the quite the unfortunate sight. So I actually currently, in order to stay in this game, I need to draw another land. Anger of the Gods does not sweep effectively, unfortunately. All right, well, pass the turn. We can do a castle, a castle Vantress as well, or we can start pumping Midnight Clock to get a better hand. I want to consider emptying out our uh, cards in hand, if that's the case. Like Ranger of Eos doesn't seem like a card I want to stick around. Might not be able to stop it, though, because Exodus can do its thing. But if we can delay the game, that's okay. We're only at 17 after all, so not too much of a big deal here. Down to 13. So I think we're going with Avantress, because we really want that mountain. I want to be able to actually cast niv -Mizzets. Hello. Um, so if I put that on top... Six, seven, eight. We've got four, eight. I'm not going to be able to actually cast it, but it is a way of protecting Niv Mizzet. That being said, they're quite creature focused, so it's hard to say. I think I will put it on top, though. All right, Niv Mizzet again. Hope for the best, honestly. <laughs> Bone Crusher my face to get back. I'm assuming Ranger, yeah. Can Ranger get anything that can deal with Niv Mizzet? Because it's uh, mana value one or less. So then get that Al Seeds to have protection, I guess. That's an option. Giant killer. Yeah, so they can do the cut down. And because I'm one mana shot, our opponent gets the absolute dream here. Uh, let's let's ping off the selfless savior. Gives me anger of the gods as an option now. Okay, take four again. We've kind of really just struggled to stay alive the whole way down. See, it looks like I'm taking four again. And then I think I'm just dead to the cat now. So he is hoping I get an answer to Extus, because that allows me to stay alive, I think. Each upkeep. Let me get my stop here, because then I can float mana with uh, Midnight Clock. And then we hope that we can answer the Exodus with our brand new seven card hand. No, oh, we can. That's pretty good. But 
But I don't know what I'm going to do about Cauldron Familiar. Cards we have don't exactly deal with a card that can just go in and out of the graveyard 17,000 times over 15 minutes. So I'm probably still just dead to that. I'm dead to that as well. Look at that. Alright, well, next game. More Heliod. And yeah, this hand looks pretty good. Uh, tap land for turn one. Turn two, we get to hold up an Essence Scatter for Heliod. Turn three for Heliod on Ageless Insight down the line. Should seem... Uh, to be a pretty good hand. We'll need an answer for the Usher of the Fallen, though. Uh, we will bottom the land. This thing can boast and make tokens, so it's a threat that will constantly get more powerful as time goes on. So a sweeper eventually would be nice. Let's see if they just go for the boast here. I would imagine they do. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Gonna pass the turn. Here comes the Heliods. We will Essence Scatter it. Redain, same difference. That's a card we definitely can't let uh, resolve. I would have sooner gone for my Heliod, honestly. I think Redain really, really makes us miserable. Um, so this is a weird one, because I do need to get down the Cold Steel Heart eventually, but I can't afford to not have... Iron Eyes open for Heliod here. I need to delay this game as much as possible. But the state of my mana base means this doesn't come into play untapped, which means Ageless Insight doesn't get to do its thing. Uh, whenever you gain life, put that many counters on this creature. Sure. What is that? Uh, three mana do nothing. We take those. Alright, I am going to dump my cards here a little bit. We're going to try for a different island. Uh, we're too slow for a Cold Steel Heart. Probably too slow for an Ageless Insight. And we'll get Curiosity later when we've secured this game. Okay. These seem pretty reasonable. Uh, let's go with... Maybe as Canter. Allows me to work on my graveyard a little bit. Can still hold up a memory lapse. As long as our opponent doesn't gain life, we don't care about Usher of the Fallen at this point in time. And if they do nothing, we opt. They are really, really interested in their Heliod, but... It's just not going to happen. So either this goes back to their command zone and they get taxed, or it goes on top of their library and they skip a draw step. It's actually, Memory Lapse is pretty decent against Commanders in uh, in Brawl, as it turns out. Giant Killer. Fantastic. Uh, Storm's Wrath. I already have an Anger, so I'm going to Graveyard that and work on my Escanter a little bit. Uh, for now, I think we will... Kill Usher, hold Iron Eyes. No concerns about lifelink anymore. And we'll be up to six cards, so a Searcherous Counter into the graveyard will be a flip. Are you up? Keep stopping. Oh no, actually no. It's uh, Arena asking them whether or not they want to put it back into their command zone. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll counter that. Honestly, that seems like a reasonable counter to me. And uh, the results speak for themselves. So we've got six cards in the yard. So search for us Cantor. We basically uh, always graveyard, whatever it is. That allows us to hardcast Niv-Mizzet. If we get to hardcast Niv-Mizzet, 
and our opponent does not have banishing lights or prison realms, uh, then we get to untap, opt, and then start machine gunning down their entire board. They probably can't win from that point. Uh, we even have an anger to sweep most of what they'll play there. So, yeah, can really, really punish them. So we got the blue, 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 red, red, red. Good stuff. Next game. <laughs> oh my, this is going to be a miserable matchup. Uh, we're going to keep because we've got Search for Canter, a Braid for any of their early game Mana Rocks. We've got Mana Rocks of our, our own as well, so we can accelerate into Niv-Mizzet. The only downside here is that we have one single red source with the Arcane Signet. That could prove to be, honestly, quite the issue. Uh, I am going to go with the Arcane Signet, though, because it means I can do Clock plus as Canter for my next turn. Nice. I think that's what we're going with. On an opt. I was expecting Mystical Dispute there, and that would have actually kind of sucked. Uh, I'm going to destroy their Arcane Signet, actually. I think that's more important. That sets them so far back. Campus and Electromancer. Uh, right, so we are going to go with Ascanta here. Pretty sure we're just going to slaying fire the Electromancer. We're trying to mana screw our opponent as much as possible, so... Denying them mana acceleration seems like a really good idea. Uh, lava Coil to the bottom. At this stage, we're looking for counter magic. Galazeth Prismari. Okay. Well. Magma Opus into the graveyard. I would like to flip my Ascanter, preferably, so. Let's go Fable Passage for the mountain. Slap down Niv-Mizzet, and just about anything they play here will trigger my Niv-Mizzet, so a solid card advantage for us. Uh, they can play their own Niv-Mizzet if they have the land here. So this is going to be a nice little trigger fest. I'd say our board state looks a lot better, though. Um, so this is board damage. This kills Galazeth. I guess we're taking it. Although I could probably kill their Niv Mizzet. Right? Two damage. Yeah. So we deal two damage. Trigger for casting the spell. And then trigger for the draw. Put it all on Niv Mizzet. Draw again, Disdainful Stroke, fantastic. Then if Mizzet's off the field. Thanks. Good game, yeah. <laughs> That's all she wrote. I don't think the Disdainful Stroke's necessarily going to be that useful, but you never know when you might need it. Like, if they've got a, a four mana, like, commit to memory or something like that for the Niv Mizzet, we can fight over it and draw cards as we go. Uh, I think our opponent knew as well as we did. They're not coming back from uh, from this little exchange. They do have more cards than me, but you got to remember that their deck is built almost exactly the same as mine, I would imagine, which is all of your removal is instant and sorcery based to take advantage of your commander. So that also means it comes at the detriment <laughs> if you come up against a, a mirror match and you get the better start. Our board state's much better. We've got more mana. We've got an active Niv-Mizzet. And our search for his counter is probably on the verge of flipping. In fact, with five cards, we can go to six with the cycled chart typhoon, and then into the graveyard for an active as counter and an active midnight clock. It's just it's all going well for us. And yep, uh, not for them. <laughs> Next game. Oh, key. Doki, we're in. 
This sounds keepable. We're up against Thassa Deep Dwelling. Uh, this is basically Agent of Treachery Flicker Tribal most of the time. 4 mana 6 5 with Indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue is less than 5, Thassa is not a creature. And then at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other creature you control. Return that card to the battlefield. The beginning. Oh my god, they've got a. They've got a ley line. Huh. Right, well, I'm going to play my Fable Passage. Basically, redo your flickers. It also can tap some stuff down as well. Uh, I'm going to go grab a mountain here, I guess. I want to be able to stomp anything our opponent plays. This is going to be a really awkward matchup. Um, maybe falls in my favor, though, with the Niv Mizzet. Having the ability to not be countered, and that's kind of their primary way of getting anything done. Uh, let's... Let's go with the Opt. Pretend to have a Shock, I guess, or a Frostbite. Honestly, I'll take Land Drops. Land Drops are going to be really useful in this matchup. Without a doubt. And go with the Confounding Conundrum, so that draws him a card. It's fine. Stops ramping, but we don't ramp, so we don't care. Tap land. Let's go with the creative outburst. Discard here. It's primarily how we were going to be using that card nine times out of ten, I would say. Negate. Fantastic. All right. Uh, from here, we're going to pass. Opponent does not want to play on my turn, interestingly. Plays a Blast Zone. So they can flash in their Thassa. If they do that, they tap out. I think I'm just going to X2 this and get a threat on board and force them to react to it. I'm certainly never going to hard cast it, though, because it's a matchup where we don't want to be dealing with that. So they have the Thassa. Which is fine. Play the mountain. So we could play the Niv Mizzet. Um, only thing they can really do is bounce it, I would say. So I should draw a card off of that. It's important to get it into play anyway and try to keep it. Keep it on the board for as long as possible. Last thing we want is our opponent getting to Agent of Treachery mana, basically. So, let's draw a card. A braid's quite nice. Ping you. To my hand. I'm going to cast it again next turn, and we're just going to keep casting it until our opponent gives up. I mean, until they give up, I'll win. <laughs> One or the other. I'm guessing what our opponent is thinking now is they've got a two-mana play that Thassa can flicker. And they're wondering whether or not they should actually play it. And they probably should. Because niv is just going to keep on coming down. Entrancing Melody, take my 2-2. Two -two. Alright, fair enough. Cavalier tap out. This is totally fine. Cavalier, with the brainstorm before brainstorm. In fact, when I kill it, and I will be killing it with uh, Slaying Fire. It allows them to shuffle. Although they're going to draw two of those three cards again and put some cards back. I need Essence Scatter for Agent of Treachery because I lose if they have that. Which, you know, I'm sure they're digging for right now. 
And then I need to be able to enter a counter war to fight their counter magic as well. So this allows me negate plus pay the adamant. Steam vents. Uh, we're going to ping our opponent's face because I have dealt enough to Cavalier. So they shuffle. Scry to the bottom. Uh, is there any value in the Niv Mizzet attack here? Yes. Yes, there is. And the value is closing this game out as quickly as humanly possible. Last thing I want is a opponent with big mana. Alright, take two. And do nothing. Fantastic. Ping our opponent. So if they do have a flashy creature that can kill Niv Mizzet here, I do have several answers to it. I've got the Abrades and the Bone Crusher Giant for damage, and I've got the Essence Scatter plus negate backup if they've got a counter magic. So we can enter a big damage war here. Or they can tap with Thassa as well. That's also an option. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that does mean that I should probably stomp the 2-2. So that I'm not taking damage while I'm constantly being tapped by Niv Mizzet. This also allows me a redraw as well. Anger of the Gods. Probably not that relevant. Snarl reveal steam vents, because I might as well. And yep, pass the turn. No two drop for them. Here we go. Do they have the Agent of Treachery? They've uh, they've drawn and scryed several thousand times. Currently doing the math on my mana, which is never a good sign. They might be thinking Agent plus Mystical Dispute, possibly. Trying to figure out if there's a way that I can not pay for it if they do wait a turn, maybe. Something like that. But I've got basically no incentive whatsoever to uh, to tap out. Mass manipulation. Yeah, so this is... An attempt. And Brazen Borrow is a good pickup if this fails. This is an attempt at trying to mystical dispute me out of uh, mana, I guess. I don't know. Yep, yeah, it's just not going to work, though. Hard counter to their deck, for sure. <laughs> uh, we did get quite lucky with a lot of uh, hard counter decks. Uh, but you know what? There was that one matchup where we just really could not get a footing and ended up just not standing a chance. Uh, this, yeah, this deck's been... It's been a kind of a bit of a hit or miss, I would say. I think the clunkiness, for me based off of the list that I have built right now, is maybe there's a little less removal than there should be. We should probably have some more targeted removal at instant speed, I think. Uh, I'm relying a little bit too much on counter magic, so I would say go down some counters, up some uh, removal just for that early game, because uh, that seems to be where we really kind of struggle to get a footing. Once we get into the late game with our niv Mizzet, then it's usually uh, smooth sailing from there. And then, you know, just a couple of our two mana counters uh, to keep us going. So I would say probably go down like an Ionize and up another like uh, two mana or one mana burn spell, something like that. That's certainly like one one situation I would see this deck being improved. I'm not sure what card it would be though, but uh, if any of you guys want to play this list, then I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, this deck was fun. Ooh, we have a pack. Let's have a look. Ooh, two Strixhaven packs. My god, Wizards, you're spoiling me. 
claim the first spawn, not spoiling me enough. Hey, Dragon's Guard Elite. I've been waiting for that card for a long time. I've opened up like 20 packs without seeing it, and it's been sad because it's about the only Strixhaven card that I want at this point. So to only just see it is sad. Just with these uncommons, they're doing me, they're doing me dirty. I hate it. I hate it. I swear these are uh, these are skewed to occur more than the rares that I actually need. The rares and the mythics, that is. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Let me know what you're playing during the Historic Brawl events down below. Maybe if I like your deck idea, I will play it in the future. As I said, yeah, probably want to go down a Saw It Coming or uh, an Iron Eyes, something like that. And then fill this 1-drop, 2-drop slot a little bit more. Uh, something that can allow you to deal with the early game, something that you could play post Niv Mizzet as well, uh, I think would be quite nice. We just didn't, we didn't seem to draw our removal in the order that we should, so yeah, maybe we're running a too, few too many uh, counter magic spells, I don't know. But uh, you know, for a first attempt, it's pretty good. But yeah, take care guys, have a wonderful night.